Hello everyone and welcome to another video on the channel of the Giro d'Italia this year. I'm here with the vested uh, Landa supporter that is Ewan, Mr. Kroko himself. Ewan, what exactly happened to the Basque rider? Well, if you're tuning in from Spain or at least from Bahrain, well, look away now. Mika Landa is out of this Giro d'Italia. It is confirmed he did not finish stage five of the Giro into Catolica. He crashed with 4.5 kilometers to go on a traffic island. What happened here? Well, you see number 12 for Ash de Citroën, that is François Bidard. He verges too close to the traffic island, bumps off of the island, coming down, taking Mika Landa and also the Malia Azzurra, Joe Dombrowski, with him. Uh, Landa, it was a heavy, heavy crash. We've seen him crash before in finished stages, uh, but this, well, he never reached a finishing line. His Bahrain victorious team waited for him, but uh, it was all too late, and Landa is out of the Giro. This was a very unfortunate news. As you said, he was one of the favorites for the race. The stage yesterday, he actually showed that he was really strong and managing to be up there with the favorites. And of course, Landa has one of the best GC records in the last couple of years. And unfortunately, yeah, Mika Landa doesn't take his first ever Giro d'Italia. Landa always has mishaps in Grand Tours, whether it's being caught out in echelons or... Uh, maybe coming down on one stage or so forth. But he hasn't quit a Grand Tour or abandoned the Grand Tour since the Giro d'Italia in 2016, finishing all of those Grand Tours apart from one within the top 10 in GC. So this is a huge shock to the system. It's very unlike Mika Landa. It's definitely a bitter pill for Bahrain victorious to swallow. What does this also mean for Bahrain victorious? Well, Bahrain victorious... Uh, they pulled back a couple of their teammates. We saw Tratnik, Arashido, Vals, and Mate Mohoric all wait back on the line. They lost about five minutes, whilst um, Damiano Caruso still finished in that front group. Caruso looked brilliant to Sestola. So Caruso could still be a wild card for a top five. And I really do truly believe in that. Bahrain came here to contend this. He shows that he has form and potentially could get a top 10 in GC, just like he did last year at the Tour de France. What does this mean for Landa's 2021 season? Do you think he's going to try and recover? Uh, we still don't know what the injury is. It could be quite uh, severe. Do you think he should maybe bid for a Vuelta España later this year? That would give him more time to recover. Well, the Vuelta España hasn't really been Mika Landa's suit, really. He hasn't been in attendance since 2015. Uh, it's not really his preferred Grand Tour. He loves the Giro and the Tour. A Walter Espana could be on the cards. I think they're going to be going for Walter Pools at that one. But if they just resort out what their plans were, then maybe we could see a Landissimo at the Walter Espana. So anyways, one of the riders that might have looked like the beneficiaries out of this crash of Landon not being in the Giro d'Italia is, of course, Egan Bernal. But Ineos Grandier has actually had a crash with Pavel Sivakov as well. Pavel Sivakov, of course, we think have finished has finished the stage, but he definitely isn't the same rider that he has been before. And he was looking quite disgruntled as well on the TV camera. So um, what will these two riders having crashed do for the general classification? Well, the loss of Sivakov is a big blow. By the looks of it, from yesterday at Sestola, uh, Sivakov could have been a good co-leader or at least a backup for Egan Bernal, who has been looking mixed in long-term races since the Tour de France last year. So we don't know how that's going to go in internally within Ineos, but uh, hopefully Sivakov is okay. And this isn't a, a, a similar situation to Nice last year where he crashed. He managed to finish the stage, but eventually he ended up pulling out of uh, that Grand Tour. So who knows what's going to happen with Ineos. But Bernal could be a big uh, winner of today, losing uh, Landa in the crash. But also, let's not forget, uh, the man who's currently king of the hill in terms of the GC battle is Alexander Vlasov of Russia. Um, Landa and Vlasov are similar riders um, they're both okay at time trialing. Vlasov proved himself a lot better in the first time trial, but they're both good at high mountains and that proper hardy mountain racing. Now that Landa's not here, well, Vlasov has got one less competitor, but could that backfire? Well, Landa added extra manpower to that group at Sestola that we saw with Landa, Ciccone and Bernal. So who knows what will happen later on into the race. We will see it tomorrow at San Giacomo on that climb. So... Definitely um, a post-Landa Giro d'Italia. 
will be interesting, especially now that we've also lost Almeida. Yeah, it's definitely going to be an interesting stage tomorrow and stage six. Make sure to join us on the stream for that and check out our stage preview of that as well. Yeah, sad day for all us Lambda fans and especially Ewan, who had a vested interest with his £3 bet. But that's basically it for this video. Thank you very much for watching as always. And we'll see you again very soon indeed.